In this video, we're going to take a look at a tool called Loki, which is a log aggregation tool. It's similar to Elasticsearch, but it is slightly different the way it stores the logs and the way it indexes the logs. So let's say you want to collect logs from all your pods, all your containers, gather them in one place so that it becomes easy for you to search for something and visualize it. So Loki is the right tool for you. And we're going to look at Loki in this video. I've got my Linux machine here. Here, I've got Arch Linux installed and I've got a Kubernetes cluster and if I do kubectl get nodes I've got one master node two worker nodes and this has been provisioned using my vagrant environment and all these are virtual machines running in VirtualBox okay and let's go to the documentation I search for Grafana Loki all right so I'm gonna to go to the Loki documentation and going to go to the installation and I'm gonna prefer the helm way of installing Installing Loki install through Helm. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add the chart repository for Grafana Loki. So copy that. And before that, let me show you. I've got Helm repo list. I've got nothing but one chart repository. That's for the uh, the NFS, the dynamic NFS provisioning. Okay. So I'm gonna add this new repository and do Helm repo update. And now I can do Helm repo search. Sorry, Helm search repo. I always get this wrong. Helm search repo Grafana and all these charts are provided by this repository. And the one that we are interested in is Loki stack. Loki stack is a, a set of components uh, like you've got Loki that stores the logs. That's the log storage engine, uh, which also indexes the logs. Uh, it doesn't index the logs, but it indexes the metadata of the logs. And then we have Promptail. So that's the agent that gets installed on all your worker nodes or all your Kubernetes nodes that is responsible for collecting logs from all the pods running on the respective nodes and then it sends it to Loki where it stores indexes and everything and then we have Grafana as part of this Loki stack and through Grafana you can visualize the logs you can explore the logs you can search logs and things like that so we're going to be installing Loki stack and the version of chart is going to be 2.4.1 and the app version is 2.1.0 but if you're watching this video in the future the versions might have been changed so I can't guarantee the installation process that I'm showing you today might be the same and you're watching this in the future but bear this in mind for this video I'm using the chart version 2.4.1 and the app version is 2.1.0 right so we have added our helm repository and now we are good to install Loki stack okay so there are different ways to install it comes with different components what I usually do is if you want to install something from helm I first download the values file so that I can understand what can be configured what can be changed and things like that all right, so for that, I'm going to run this command helm show values. That's Grafana is the chart repository and Loki stack is the chart that we are trying to install and redirecting that to a temporary file. So that is going to give us the values file that we can configure. OK, so if I edit that file temp Loki stack values .yaml, So these are the values that you can customize. So I'm not interested in file beat and I'm not interested in log stash. So I'm going to delete all these. OK, I don't need Prometheus. Right, so we have Loki that's enabled. We have Promptail that's enabled. We have Fluentbit that's disabled. I don't want Fluentbit. I'm going to delete that. Instead of Promptail, you can use Fluentbit if you like. So Promptail or Fluentbit is the agent that's going to get installed on all your Kubernetes node that is responsible for collecting logs from all your pods and sending that to Loki. Right, so I'm good with Promptail and I'm also going to enable Grafana, which is disabled by default in this particular chart version. So I'm going to say true. All right. So that's all you need. Loki, Promptail and Grafana. Enable Grafana. And the Grafana version is 7.5.0. Okay. So one thing to bear in mind at this point is if I show again the values.yaml file, this one hasn't got any persistence enabled. So we need to enable persistence for Loki at least because Loki is the part that stores the logs. The, the logs that are collected from all your pods through Promptail is stored in Loki. So you need to enable. If you're, if you're just trying out Loki, then that's fine. But if you're interested in running this in production, make sure to enable persistence for Loki otherwise when you restart the Loki pod all the data collected so far will be lost. I've got dynamic volume provisioning installed in my cluster. If I show you kubectl get storage class I've got a default storage class. This is the 
the dynamic NFS provisioning. So whenever I create a persistent volume claim, a persistent volume will get created automatically for me. And if you search in YouTube for just me, dynamic NFS, you'll have these two videos. Cube 23 is the one that I did two years ago. That's not relevant anymore. But Cube 23.1 is the recent video that I did and I'm using that setup for this video. Okay, so by default, as I've shown in the uh, values.yaml file, persistence is not enabled. So I'm going to show you how to enable persistence. So for that, I'm going to go back to the documentation. And here it says deploy Loki stack with persistent volume claim. Okay, so you can either run the Helm command by passing all the values that you find in this values.yaml file directly in the command line using minus minus set. But I prefer downloading the values.yaml file and version control it so that I know what exactly has gone into each of the release. Okay, so the things that are that I'm interested in are Grafana, they're enabling Grafana, which we did exactly here through the values file. And then Prometheus.enabled is true, but I don't want Prometheus, so I've disabled it. Prometheus.alertManager.persistent volume. So if you're using Alert Manager, you make sure to enable persistent volume for Alert Manager as well. But for me, it's just the low key. So this one here. So I'm going to copy this paste it here okay so what I'm going to do now is okay let me turn off the syntax highlighting so that I can see better right here under low key and um, I need to have persistence colon and then enabled colon true and then we have storage class name is here it's set to standard so in my case the storage class is nfs dash client so that's my storage class but i don't have to specify this because that's the default storage class anyway so i'm not going to specify this but if you don't have any default storage class make sure to specify your storage class here and then finally the size size is set to 5 gigs set to whatever you like so i'm going to set that to 1 gig so that's it and that's the line just for reference okay i'm deleting that line so that's all you need but as i said i'm going to delete the storage class name because i've got the default storage class that's going to get used okay so that's all i need in my values.yaml file all the changes that i've done is enabled grafana and then enabled persistence for loki all right so now let's install this helm stack, the local, the Loki stack. Okay, the command is helm install Loki stack. So that's the name that you are giving it for this release. It can be any name. And then the chart repository, the chart that you want to install from that chart repository, and the values file that you want to use for this installation because you've changed something. And then you want, if you want to install this on a specific namespace, pass minus n Loki. So either you can create this Loki namespace yourself, or if you want Helm to create the namespace for you, just use this option minus minus create namespace. All right, so I'm gonna hit enter now. Okay, so all these warnings should be gone when they update the chart. They're just saying port security policy, which is gonna be deprecated after 1.21. Now I can do Helm list. You won't see anything because we've installed this Helm release in a specific namespace. So I can do Helm list minus N Loki. Yeah, there we go. So that's Loki stack. And if I do Helm list, list all the Helm deployments on all the namespaces. So we have Loki stack and the NFS subdir external provisioner for my dynamic NFS provisioning. Okay, kubectl get namespace. I've got Loki. Let's see what's being deployed in the Loki namespace kubectl minus n loki get all right so we have the loki stack we have grafana we have promptail as you can see promptail is a daemon set it has to be daemon set because as you add more nodes to your cluster this promptail needs to be installed on all those nodes so it has to be a daemon set and we have a deployment of grafana with one replica and then we have loki stack which is a stateful set it's not ready yet let's give it some more time and i can do kubectl minus n loki get pv comma pvc there we go so that's the storage persistent volume claim for the loki stack and the persistent volume that got created automatically and it's using the nfs client storage class okay let's do let's check all the parts again get all right so we've got everything running now we are good to log into grafana okay so 
keep CDL minus N low key get all. So if you look under service, we have this low key stack Grafana. You can edit the service low key stack Grafana and make it a load balancer type service so that you get a load balancer IP. And if you're running this on a bare metal um, or in a virtualization environment, you can use metal LB for load balancing. But for this demo, I'm just going to use a simple port forwarding. But if you want, you can set up an ingress for Grafana or a simple load balancer service. Let's open up another test. Let me know. Get all, and I'm going to do a port forward low key port forward. So, what I'm doing here is in the low key namespace. I'm port forwarding the service low key stack Grafana to port 3000 on my local host. So, if I hit 3000 on my local host now, it will take me to port 80 of this service. Let's start our port forwarding service. All right, so that's port forwarding. So, now I can go here and go to localhost colon 3000. Cool, so that's our Grafana welcome page and what's the credential? The username is going to be admin and for password, we need to do a bit of hack to find out what the password is. So let me show you. In the Loki namespace, if you do get secrets, you have the Loki stack Grafana secret. So that's the one that has the admin pass. So let's describe that. Loki stack Grafana minus O YAML. If I scroll about, the admin password is this one. So that's the base64 encoded form of the password. So let's copy that. And I'm gonna echo and pipe that to base64 minus D decode. Okay, let me also do an echo so that we get the clear password. So that's the password that we're gonna use. Okay, copy and paste. Right, logged in. So that's our Grafana dashboard. Let me increase the size of the font. If I go to data sources, the Loki data source has already been added for me. And if you look at the URL, it's Loki dash stack colon 3100. And in here, if you look in the service, so that's the Loki stack listening on 3100. So the Grafana pod has already been configured to connect to Loki as the data source. Okay, so now I can go to this explore and here's where I can query the logs. Okay, so let me show you how to. To use this, you need to know logql. So let me show here logql, low key query language. It's an extensive query language, which you need to learn by the way. But I'll show you just some quick examples. It will be that the format will be like this. If you've used Splunk or Elasticsearch before, you might know these um, syntaxes. Let's go back here and I'm going to run a simple query. And uh, there's also a visual help tool that you can use if you don't want to write the query yourself. So if I click on log browser, so make sure the first thing is to make sure that you've selected the right source here. So if you see like Grafana in here, make sure to select the Loki as the data source and then log browser. Okay, so first, if I click on the namespace, so we have these namespaces. So I'm gonna filter by, let's say, cube system namespace. And if I click show logs, there we go. So that's all the logs from the cube system namespace, from all the pods running in the cube system namespace. Okay. And if I click that again, and if I say I want to have all the pods, look at the logs of all the pods running in the Loki namespace, select that show logs and these are all the logs from pods in the Loki namespace and you can see here so equally you can write the query like this namespace is Loki okay let's do something more additional so I want cube system and I also want there's four components 10 containers so if I click on component so I've already selected cube system as the namespace so in the cube system namespace I want logs from all the pods all the cube API server pods okay and click on show logs and that's it. So that's all the logs from the Cube API server. If I expand one of them, you can see the pod is Cube API server, namespace is Cube system. Okay, right. So that's the component here, namespace. This is how you can aggregate your query. And let's say, for example, in the namespace Cube system, I want to look at all the logs of the Cube API server where the log contains something. Okay, so that's the actual useful query, right? I don't want to see all these uh, rubbish thing. I'm just putting particularly interested in a specific thing, for example. Okay, let's go ahead and do something else. Namespace is cube system, component is etcd, show logs. Okay, this is better. So let's say I want to filter all the, all the log entries that contain MVCC. What I need to do is pipe and add an equal to sign and then 
enter my search text here my search text is going to be mbcc and shift enter right so now we've got the query so all the parts all the hcd parts in the cube system namespace that contains mbcc in the log entry okay so if you want to do a reverse search or if you want to do a negate of this all the parts that all the log entries that doesn't contain mbcc you just need to replace the pipe symbol with an exclamation so that will give you all the logs that doesn't contain that don't contain mbcc okay so i'm, I'm just touching the tip of the iceberg this query language is so extensive here so if you were to deploy this in production i would advise you to go through these documentation their documentation is very helpful you've got very detailed documentation hope you enjoyed this video i think that's all for this video i'll see you all in my next video meanwhile if you've got any questions on this let me know i'll be happy to help until then keep learning and keep on learning bye bye